I love Convergence videos. Ah, memories. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the riverboat Natango Bell, and welcome also to the Steam Century Steampunk Fashion Exposition. I have been just handed a note that says that uh, daguerreotypes, uh, silver nitrate imaging, and something called digital photography um, are allowed during this event. So if you would like to take pictures, you are welcome to do so. At this point in time, I would like to introduce our master of ceremonies. He is the owner and operator of the world famous Dark Carnival which has entertained millions from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Dark. Ladies and gentlemen, swells and bells, scoundrels and savages, welcome to the third annual fashion exposition where you shall see wonders from around the world, creative fellows from your own hometowns, and lots of surprises, I guarantee. We will go right to the action without a pause or a moment's notice. Our first entrant, Moltar von Seplecher. Hailing from a future where the Allies lost the Cold War, Moltar sports the finest in black market apparel. Equal applause for everyone, da? Ah. Thank you very much. And now we have the best Dorian ever. Complete attire, crafted, altered, or adorned by Dorian herself. Very lovely. Thank you very much. A special treat, ladies and gentlemen. Near and dear to my heart, the Steampunk Tea Party. <laughs> While on their way to the Hatters to tea, Alice, the Cheshire Cat, and the Mad Hatter decided to stop by and wish you all a very merry unbirthday in costumes created by themselves. <laughs> all right, lovely ladies, thank you very much. And now we have the lovely Patty Ryan. Quite simply, a gypsy pirate steam bump. Very lovely. Thank you very much. And now, a hero or a villain that needs no introduction, but I shall anyway because I have it here on this card. Ange Olsen, between the front lines and the command post, our communications officer is there to receive and send messages to the benefit of her fellow soldiers. And now we have Captain Brianna of the airship Event Horizon. Her attire consists completely of handmade accessories, including goggles with metal and pearl trim, as well as original airship pin, steampunk choker, and memory necklace. All designed by the captain himself. Thank you. Here's one of those special treats I mentioned before, the Steam Puff Sisters. <laughs> Handmade with love by Mother, the two sisters set out on an epic journey, designed and tailored over the course of six months to be showcased for you now. Pay special attention to the accessories, all made with found objects dedicated to mom for her excellent steam stress abilities. The <laughs> Steam Puff Sisters. Thank you, ladies. And now we have Grenatia Green. Grenatia is a mad scientist on a mission from Ireland to test her invention. Her invention was steampunk beer goggles. <laughs> You can find it later in all of the party rooms this evening. Thank you very much. And now, those in the 
front row, hang on to your hats. We have Aeronaut Ben. <laughs> Utilizing his string wings, Aeronaut Ben works as a freelance scout and air cartographer. Armed with his trusty pistol blade, he is ready for any challenge for the right price. Thank you, Ben. Happy landings. And now we have Lady Jewel. No nonsense, always on the move. Our Lady Jewel. Thank you very much. And now we have, because we could not leave them out, and we have had demands for them from the past, the crew of the Brass Falcon, aerial privateers. We have, in order, Captain McClellan, Commander Dane, Lieutenant Rhodes, and Lieutenant Exe. The crew of the Brass Falcon has docked at Convergence. They are premier aerial privateers, thanks in part to their unique time travel device. Stand back. Here we have next, Logan Redhawk. He is a hunter of the frontier. With goggles to advance, enhance his vision, no prey escapes his sight. Carrying all he needs in his trusty bedroll. Who needs an airship? Not for Logan Redhawk. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special treat. Dr. Catherine Danforth Quinn. Dr. Danforth Wynn is the medical officer of the Antiguous when not serving with Her Majesty the Queen. God save the Queen! Thank you very much. Now we have Madam Alexander. A marvelous clockwork wind-up doll. Full Victorian skirt with bustle, wind-up key on the back. A shrug coat accented with gear buttons, and a necklace made from a wind-up clock key. Thank you very much. They are plentiful, they are here, they are the airship pirates, Mark and Beth. What to wear for an evening of terrorizing villagers in your airship? Plenty of leather, brass, and buckles. And, don't forget, the lace and ruffles, too. Very lovely. And you, Matt. <laughs> now we have Sarah Tesh. The sleeves are hand-hemmed. The shawl is actually a window valance. <laughs> very, very lovely. The inspiration is of English heritage and a bit of bravado. <laughs> Here we have Lady Eleanor of Portland Estate, a highborn lady of fortune traveling into the unknown world of London with her trusty timepiece around her neck. Everything she needs for an adventure, gentlemen. Lady Eleanor, thank you. This is Joanna Foster. She's a weird West Saloon girl, part-time steam engine hijacker, and whatever else you may need. Always on time for causing mischief. I like the lady who can take care of herself. Here we have Scarlet and Cyrus from Geoquestrian Enterprises. Cyrus wears a waistcoat of Sheffield tweed and a cropped whip mechanical steeds. Scarlet is not wearing the whip that she uses to whip Cyrus off his degenerate behind and start walking. <laughs> Scarlet, however, is wearing an underbust from the esteemed scoundrel's keep. <laughs> very lovely. Thank you very much.
Ladies, hold your children still, faceless and stitched. Both of these are handmade original costumes. Faceless and Stitch are Wasteland mercenaries. Here we have Catherine. <laughs> Catherine is sporting a handmade outfit with various objects from thrift stores. Mom helped make it. The goggles, however, and the timepiece are a gift from far off San Francisco. <laughs> and now we have Claire. She is Victorian inspired with a two piece dress designed and made by herself of velvet tea dyed lace. The hat is a fascinator, also designed and made by herself, and it features a little white mouse peeking out the back. <laughs> Fan, parasol, and boots are purchased from Japan. Last but not least, the ladies' Victronics. Clothing by Scoundrel's Keep. And all of it is available in the dealer's room. The hat is by Apatico. Well, the tension builds, the excitement mounts. The judges are making their final tabulation.